Good morning, traders and investors. Thanks for tuning in with Pre-Market Prep with Stock Odds. Let's see uh, how the markets are doing today. Uh, the S&P futures are down about uh, just under 1% at 41.20. Uh, the dollar, that's up about 0.3% at 103.69. Uh, the bonds, those are pretty much flat on the session at uh, 126.29. Uh, crude, that's up almost 2% at uh, 74.25. Uh, gold, that's down uh, just slightly uh, by 0.1% uh, at 1971. Uh, silver, that's down a little bit over 1% at 2330. And Bitcoin, that's down almost 4% at 26,150. All right, well, there's your market update, and let's uh, get Rob in here. How are you doing this morning, Rob? Good. Thanks for asking. Appreciate it. Yeah, you had a bit of time off there. Uh, you took an extra long weekend, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we uh, we get an extra day in Canada, and uh, yeah, took uh, okay. took one more day. <laughs> but well, and then you get to. Are you going to repeat that next week with? Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the 29th being a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it goes the opposite way. Next week, working an extra day. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're trying out uh, just a little bit of a different streaming software today. So hope the quality is coming through. So it's supposed to be a little bit more clear for you guys. So you can let me know in the chat. But anyway, I, I figured we'd start with just a little bit of a, a review from last week. I'll pull that up. Uh, right there. So... So last week, as far as the stock odds list, uh, it performed, I mean, really well, like at over 3% uh, return on capital after commissions and fees and all that. Before commissions and that, it was 3.1%, something like that. But uh, wanted to- Yeah, I mean, that's that's yeah. actually, Josh, that's 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 a little bit uh, higher than, you know, what we would expect. We're trying to target yeah. between one and a half and 2%. So you have to- when you get those bigger, bigger weeks, you have to put in perspective because you could have a, you know, losing week as well, right? Um, exactly. And there was a couple symbols that were really responsible for uh, for that big movement, right? So anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the couple of symbols, especially CTLT here, um, that was, you know, pretty much down. This was on the long side. Uh, that was going down for the week. Uh, but heading into Friday, um, it was uh, it was earnings, and so um, so the question was, you know, what whether you should uh, take it in, uh, or or leave leave it in or take it out. Uh, so let's uh, I'll bring up the chart here. Uh, so yeah, CTLT it was it was going down, and then it was considering taking it off on Friday, but uh, it took a look at uh, the seasonality almanac that uh, that stock odds puts out and uh, both mid-month uh, seasonality and uh, it was also friday expiration all those odds were pointing in the right direction so 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 it was it was not performing i mean even though you were entering the, the mid-month seasonality window it was you know still hadn't performed probably because of this this wait and see for earnings maybe Maybe in this case, there was no leak of information. There was, you know, nobody had it really dialed in. It wasn't, uh, you know, one of those bigger stocks on the radar or whatever. Um, and maybe very little analyst activity. There could be reasons why it was so soft, you know, um, because the market had already started to, you know, move a little bit uh, up on Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, Friday, right? So mm -hmm. um, Thursday, I mean, so... Um, but this is the thing. This is the thing about rules. Some people have rules that you're not going to take anything into earnings, right? Yeah. I think it's contextual, right? I think that because the market's so efficient, that you need to look at things with the perspective of context, rather than always an absolute rule that you cannot change, you will never change. Um, I think that locks you in. Um, I think a, a lot of times, uh, you know, the special opportunities come where you have to know 
when to be disciplined and, and, and when not to, or when to allow for something like this. So the context here is it, it had a number of expectations. Mm -hmm. One was just on the weekly. The second was on the mid month seasonality. And the third one was on the expiration Friday. The wild card was the earnings. So if a stock is already discounted going into an earnings event, yeah, and you're not you're not pot committed on it. I mean, you could have added another layer in this if if it, it met a target, but you're not, you know, it's not like you're highly leveraged into one idea. This is just one instrument in your portfolio for the week. So you owe it to yourself to give it an opportunity to, you know, perform on that last day. Since you had a lot of ducks lined up, you just you just had the wild card of not knowing what the earnings release would be. So mm -hmm. I so hope this is a, you know, an educational moment for some. And that is that, mm -hmm. you know, if something is already discounted, it's kind of like, you know, with retail sales, you know, the retail sales report that comes out, we always look at things to say, okay, what is expected versus where is the stock? Like what's actually been happening to it versus what's expected, right? You got to tie the two together. Mm -hmm. And the, the bigger opportunities come from things that are, you know, way out of line and, and you know, or, or there's way too much bullishness or way too much bearishness. You know, kind of like the the reason some of the regional banks have become meme stocks is because you know it was so it was so negative, so bearish, so many uh, you know bad reports and also failures. That um, does that apply to absolutely everything, or are there you know nuggets that uh, people are sinking their teeth into and and playing the game, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's 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 like that. You got to watch for those kind of atmospheres, and and often why you know when a stock is heading into bankruptcy or something, why you see some of these big violent moves, you know, where everybody pounces on it, um, and it's it's again, it's just an opposite to uh, to the sentiment. So trading trading from a perspective of you know short bursts and short opportunities. It's a it's an upside down world compared to maybe the long range investor thinking because long range investor thinking would be I I don't want exposure to certain things right, right? yeah um, you're sharing me oh I see you sharing me yeah, sharing yes. me again <laughs> yeah I'm People duplicated oh now. no yeah <laughs> you don't Josh you don't want two of me honestly yeah yeah, yeah no. <laughs> definitely not so uh, so uh yeah uh, anyway and, and the separate sort of the investment uh philosophy from the trading opportunity right mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. um yeah so that was that symbol yeah that, um that was CTA i can show it on my do you want me to show it on my screen uh any other symbols i got them here if you want um, sure. I mean, the CTLT was the second highest performer, um, and that was on the long side. But we could take a look at uh, uh, Maxon, uh, M A X N, uh, if you want to show that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, well, I was, I was thinking of taking a look at the losing symbols, but there weren't really too many. It was pretty, uh, pretty flat for those. Okay, well, uh, we're still on the long side here. What's the other symbol? Uh, or did you switch to the short side? M A X N. Uh, well, that's that on the short, the short, short side. one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Here. Okay. Um, so the thing with uh, that's the daily chart there that you see. Yep. And uh, it had this uh, massive uh, move here, uh, probably related to earnings. Came back down. And then uh, heading into the oh sorry here's here's the uh, the massive earnings event so 
why why it triggered on stock odds was was probably because of this uh, spike here on May 12th that reversed. So he had a, a really high performance uh, in the week before, and then on uh, Friday you had this this candle with that reversal. So the algo picked up that reversal and had it for a short on Monday. So that's where we came in here. So mm -hmm. let's roll to the 15 minute chart here and scroll back to um, the Monday is where it opened here, May 15th. Mm -hmm. So it drifted down and then uh, had, a, had a good move down. Um, so this was it, almost the opposite it, case then with uh, the CTLT was, uh, was, you know, lower heading into earnings. Well, and, and this at least was elevated. So is that uh, playing a part in it? Yeah, there's a bit of uh, mean reversion going on, obviously, in the sense of, you know, the context of of how it got there, plus the the odds on the weekly. Um, so this was a candidate for mean reversion. And it gave us that. Now, if you covered it here on the Wednesday after a gap down, mm -hmm. I would not fault you for that. In fact, you're... You it's know what you got out of it then was yeah yeah it, 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 what you got out of it was was pretty good i mean it did have a bounce and then it kind of came back down so the net performance wasn't too different but um you would have had to sit through this retracement um and and that's never fun when you have a really good profit um and so be mindful of those um gaps on the profit side as well as the gaps on the loss side. So sometimes the gaps could be an opportunity to add, and sometimes it could be an opportunity to subtract. Mm -hmm. Remember the market's extremely efficient overall. And so you're looking for these disruptions. Disruptions can be like, for example, what's going on in China with a new wave of COVID. All of a sudden you see you know, Myrna and Pfizer and, and some, some other stocks like that, yeah, you know, really rip up, really rally, right? And and so, um, you know, could be war, you see defense contractors, could be, there's, there's things that come along that disrupt things. Right now we have the debt ceiling issues and the markets rolled over because of that. If you didn't have that market probably would still be really efficient kind of marching up a little bit. And um, and so you get these disruptions and you have to learn to use them to your advantage. Um, and that's, again, similar to this, the story of CTLT with the, with the context of earnings. You owed it to yourself to leave it in there because it was discounted. Mm -hmm. And right. this, this became an opportunity here that it had a move, it was elevated, and the odds were that the following week would be um, mean reversion. And so it went our way. So it went in keeping with what was expected. On Wednesday, mm -hmm. you had peak performance. Now, you didn't know at that point that it would be peak performance. But think about where did this, where did this gap to? Was there a level that it came down to? Look at that. It completely filled the gap. And if you know anything about gap fills, first of all, on the daily, we should expect them over the long sample. We should expect most gaps to be filled. Secondly, when the gap is filled. Yeah, that yeah, it reaches your target. Yeah, right. Your apple pie is baked. It's done. <laughs> Finished. OK, yeah. So so it should be something that you say, you know what, I'm willing to lock in. And then here's the thing, you, you know, we always rationalize, we argue with ourselves, blah, blah, blah. You say, well, I'm so I'm so green on this stock. It's 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 juicy. It's amazing. I'm super green on this. And he, the natural tendency is to get greedy and and think it'll give you more. So that's why you push yourself back from your desk. Look at the perspective, right? It had an event. It came back to where its starting point was. So full circle, the gap was filled. Yeah. And 
Well, yeah, like, the gap was filled kind of... on a actual and on an actual gap, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, by the way, yeah. got filled again. If you look at here, so yeah. <laughs> it, are things technically traded? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's one of the pillars that we have in the learning academy, right? We have six pillars that we talk about: fundamental foundation. Fundamentals can matter at various times, right? Technical considerations. Technicals can matter. They don't, they don't necessarily tell you what's going to happen next, but they can certainly provide context. Statistical information, which is what we largely curate for actionable ideas. Mm -hmm. Historic relationships and observations. Yeah. I mean sentiment. What... Obviously, sentiment is terrible right now with the debt ceiling thing. Yeah. And News and other macro forces, like, for example, did anything change with the drug stocks? Yeah. Did anything change with oil stocks recently? Yes. There's catalysts. There's reasons for things to move. Acknowledge that. Be aware of it. You don't have to overthink it, overinterpret, you know, analyze every little word. You, you, you just have the general context of the macro. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Joel. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Josh, well, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Joel's close enough. Um, <laughs> well, so, so you know, things tend to fill the gap there. Uh, but what, uh, what would change your mind and um, what would make you look for continuation? Like once it, once it fills well, the gap? Well, I, I mean, oh. even, see, this is, the, this is the thing we argue with. You get greedy, right? And you say you want more out of it. But even if it continued to go, how much more would it give you relative to what it already did see think of it mm -hmm. think of it in terms of like annualized return if you if you expect a stock to give you 10 percent performance and it does it in the first 20 minutes of the of the day and you don't have to hold it all day and you've got your performance you know how much more will it really give you you know another couple percentage points maybe Versus what you already got in 20 minutes. Think of that annualized return. It's like it paid you in 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like you, you got to think like that. This thing in the two in two days gave you most of it on the gap on the on Wednesday, the third day. It gave you a complete round trip there. I mean, <laughs> you're all the way back to where it started <laughs> from and you got that move. You didn't take any of the pain. You got the full move. Right. So, I don't know. so in this uh, case, uh, it's kind of don't, the, don't, the risk outweighs. Yeah, the don't reward. bang yourself yeah. up. You know, don't hit yourself on the head with a hammer if you took it off at a profit and it kept going a little bit, right? <laughs> because the reality is it probably wouldn't have gone that much more. And the reason is look at Something caused it to move higher. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that engine is completely over just because it pulled back? Like, this is not normal. You don't have something just kind of look at the CTLT as well, right? Same mm -hmm. thing. You don't have something just, you know, plug, plugging along here. See, this is the efficiency I'm talking about in the marketplace. That is why it's so difficult to make money and, and, and ex why you have to have a reasonable expectation of like what we have of, you know, 0.1% return on capital is kind of a benchmark that we strive for. Yeah. It's, that sounds like very low, but that's how efficient the markets are. You need things like this that stir the pot up. So, the pot was stirred. It gave you a, a massive uh, premium. And our starting point was from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Right? So opportunities there. So if you got this opportunity and it's right back to where it started and you locked the profit, and it, even if it went a bit more it would have gone a bit more for you. You shouldn't play the woulda, shoulda, coulda game at that point. Right. You should just be thankful for what you did take and how it behaved and whatever. Now, you could have waited after the gap to see 
what it did. But as soon as this thing started heading up with that signal to noise ratio right there, you would have locked it anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. so whether you locked it on the open print or whether you locked it heading up, you, why would, why would you stay in this heading back when you already have that profit? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. When it starts to fill the gap right? the other way. Yeah. So, so, you know, if, if you, I would say if you locked it here, no fault, congratulations. If you didn't lock it, you would have had to sit through this. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, where are we here? Um, if you didn't lock it, we'd have had to sit through this move here, mm -hmm. right? Which it finally came back down on Friday, but you would have still had to give back some of it, you know, painfully watching it. Yeah. And if you took it till Friday, well, then that was part of your game just to take it from Monday's open to Friday's close and sit through whatever. So no fault there either, if that's the game plan. Um, but there will be, there will be these production opportunities along the way where you, get a chance to close something and protect the profit. And you won't always be perfect, but it's part of a production methodology. If you just want to hold it for the week till the close on Friday, that's fine too. Right. right. Okay, next symbol. So, well, uh, let's let's uh, shift a little bit more towards uh, this week. Uh, speaking of whether we should uh, take profits and uh or not okay before yeah. i'll flip it back to you Bef before we go to this week can i share something about our daily lists for a second sure yeah yeah okay um i just want to bring up pfizer here um because Fr pfizer was on our list yesterday for the open the close trading um and it ended up you know going against us so so here's the thing how how do the statistical models get trained i think it's important to understand what goes into you know producing something right okay so okay. if you notice if you notice something about pfizer along the way mm -hmm. it was a very weak stock after you know sort of the december yeah. high there I mean that wasn't the high high, but it was a very it was a very weak stock. So what happens is re related to this particular symbol, every time it rallies, it pulls back, mm -hmm. right? And even when it's soft, it goes down again, right? Or like here's a reversal day here, you know, up and then pull back, and the next day really down. So what happens is the statistics take all that into account and go, Pfizer is a wet dish rag, <laughs> right? Okay. okay. Yeah. It's just, it, it just can't, you know, since here, because our data is including everything that's ever happened in, in Pfizer for the last 10 years. But as, as time goes on, all of these samples, you know, are the most recent samples so so there's a certain element of weight to that okay so it didn't always and used to be it, a, a wet dish rag <laughs> no it didn't always but it, it, you know in this last season it's a it's a wet dish rag so yeah. so then uh the models you know get trained to say pfizer's a good short if it pokes its head up okay mm -hmm. well what's different about let me go to the five minute here what's different now than was okay so what happened here from from that wet dish rag it suddenly mm -hmm. pokes its like head up and yeah. starts to rally so so on the it's 24th on the um on Not this move here on the yeah, 23rd the sorry the 22nd yeah, yeah. okay so this move here on the 22nd, it uh, came into focus on stock odds to say if for open the close the next day, it was a short. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did the opposite but what, of that. Yeah. But what's been, what, what happened? So we've got, we've got this, we've got the sympathy to what's happening with Moderna. We got the sympathy to, you know, the, the COVID situation in China. We also have this news on Pfizer about the 
weight loss pill, which had, you know, sort of exceptional reviews and, and uh, mm-hmm. success. Um, and so there's a number of catalysts that change it. And even in the pair trading world, uh, you know, we've been looking at Pfizer long versus uh, say Merck short or Lily short, some of those combinations. Okay. So there, there's a sort of this argument for, uh, you know, Pfizer to be on the long side uh, on a number of levels. And so for, for those that were, would be in a pair trade, for example, they would have naturally vetted this and not, not had Pfizer as a short. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so, so it went against case. us. It was, yeah. it was a loss. It was a loss. Okay. And then after, after the 23rd move here, mm-hmm. so it was say short for the 23rd, it was a loss. It came out again. And, and the statistics for today said, ah, we don't, the statistics said, we don't care that it popped up. It's still a wet dish rag ultimately. <laughs> and it, it, it came up as a short again. So it was in the list again for today, but let's roll to the daily and see what it looks like here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's down see, so far. A there's bit. the the first day move, the second day move. And then here's today where it had plowed right into the upper Bollinger band. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, and, and, you know, think about context again, how quickly something moves from point A to point B. Okay, there's a there's a difference, guys. I, I when I was speaking at uh, MIT uh, one time, and uh, I was talking about the problem with a mathematical framework, the problem with uh, you know utilizing say standard deviation is the number itself two standard deviations has no context to it. It's just a number. It's like how RSI is just a number. Mm -hmm. The question is possibly how it got there and how many times it's done the same thing and then what happens subsequently. So that's what stock odds is trying to solve and help you with is how many times something has happened and what's happened subsequently. Yeah. So in my talk, I demonstrated this um, moving from zero to two standard deviations very quickly Mm -hmm. versus moving very, very slowly. Yeah. So, Josh, what do you think would have the greater tendency to continue to move further? Would it be the quick move? Or the slow move. Yeah, the the gradual move. (laughs) Definitely. The gradual move would have more likelihood of continuing past two standard deviations. The very quick move to two standard deviations would would probably um be more you know retrace. And that's what you're seeing here. So it came up in the list again for today to put it on as a short, and it's paying paying us back. A little bit from the loss yesterday right Mm -hmm. so uh this this move here was the instigator to have it in the list for the next day the next day we lost then it said nope still good for a short and today uh, we get to uh open it up you know it opened at a gap up slightly and it's pulling back Mm -hmm. so you know this is again these are the tensions and the problem with the human is this. Let me pull the screen over to this side here, and you can't see today. The problem with the human is what has happened is going to continue to happen. We overweight the what we see in terms of green or red. We overweight the magnitude of moves, and we think that because something is on a trajectory, that that's going to continue. The beautiful thing about having data is it will tell you, at least on a probability basis, no guarantees, but on a probability basis, what's the likelihood of of that actually happening, Mm -hmm. okay? And that's that's a big help because that helps sort of buffer those emotions and that human tendency to overweight the current price action. 
Okay. You don't want to overweight it. So today is an example of just sticking. Yeah, we lost yesterday, but just sticking with the stats for the next day, it's paying us back a bit. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Now we can uh, roll to what you want to talk about here. <laughs> yeah. It's all about what I want to talk about. <laughs> uh, well, no, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, that's, well, oh no, it's definitely useful. I mean, it's, um, it puts into context a lot of these moves that we do see. Um, but speaking of, moves, okay, it's so back over to you. What do you want to show? <laughs> yeah. So, so PPG, um, so far in this week's, um, you know, stock odds, uh, top 10 portfolio, um, it's up about, you know, six and a half percent in total, um, or, or at least in the profit, I should say it's actually a short, uh, I'll bring up the chart here. Uh, one second here. So it's, it's moving our way that, that was another, um, that was another symbol that had pretty good performance last week. Um, and you know, I don't, one, one thing we got to stress is that they're going, there's going to be a fair amount of these shorts that may have had a, you know, reasonable week last week and the market itself had a reasonable week last week and it was, it's rolling over. Look at the, Look at the NASDAQ, for example, the Qs, you know, they've been performing really well, but again, rolling over this week because of this debt ceiling issue and maybe mm -hmm. a few other things. Um, and so you got to you got to look at relative performance as well. And so the markets rolled and PPG has rolled over more, but many of the shorts will roll over. Now, the question is whether the longs are, you know, working in terms of on an aggregate basis performing better than the shorts well that's really what you want you want your long dollars yeah. to perform better than your short dollars overall but most of the shorts should be rolling over with the market unless they are sort of inverse of what the market you know concerns are right yeah exactly uh, well and so so this one definitely the last few days has been rolling over gap and down and then another gap down uh today um so is there is there anything that would tell you, you know, if, if you're already in this um, and you're short, is there anything that would tell you, um, you know, maybe take a layer off may, or maybe, um, you know, do you want to stick through it? Well, you didn't, you didn't, according to the model, you really didn't have a chance to put a second layer on, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you were in your first layer from Monday short, right? So um, you're just staying with the trade. And, it, the way it gapped, it, it gapped actually below its 10-day support level on the open. So there was no reason, with that break, there's no reason to take it off. Okay, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you actually had an open that was slightly below the 10-day. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, and it, you know, it gapped through those numbers, like the moving average, it gapped through the 10-day well, obviously the five day, 10 day, even the 20 day support, all of a monthly last two months. I mean, it's gapping through all of that. Mm -hmm. There's no reason at that point to take it off. It's different than the MAXN that we looked at because the MAXN mm -hmm. actually gapped to that your head to say, Josh, you have to take the profit. You just go into alert mode. I'm going to protect the profit and watch for any reversal could be any type of catalyst. Mm -hmm. The catalyst itself could actually just be the market. The market could have a solution for this debt thing. Maybe it gets resolved, whatever. And the market says, now we're rallying back. Well, your shorts are gonna come back with it. Probably this one too. Um, you know, this is weaker than the overall market, but then nonetheless, it could certainly rally. So my point is you have, great profit in this trade so far it has filled the gap it's still declining on a reasonable to good signal to noise ratio mm -hmm. it's worth staying with but you now flag it to protect profit okay mm -hmm. gotcha okay uh do you have time to go through uh, one more symbol 
I got time. It's right. up to you how long you want the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, let's take a look at uh... Do you Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been with students before uh, and uh, it was three hours of uh, three, even four hours of a lecture, conversation, interaction, no breaks. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Well, we're, we're in the first hour here. We got uh, two more hours to go. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Everybody's prepared for a long show. Uh, well, so yeah. uh, pins or uh, Pinterest, I should say uh, is another short, um, but this one is, uh, is the one that's moving against, uh, the against the odds here um, so it's uh, it's been trending up the last few days um, no no real gaps but it's approaching this uh, this gap level here on uh, on let's see April 28th I'll uh, make that bigger yeah so it's approaching that there so even though it's moved against us um, would you maybe you know, add, add another layer um, to it once it reaches that level? Uh, how would you handle this? Well, I mean, that starting point could could certainly be a number, but I think, you know, you have to acknowledge that the bulls that are in charge on this one, and, you know, look at it this way. Again, relative performance to the market. Take, a, take it as terms of relative performance to its sector, relative performance to the market, relative performance to some of its peers, any way you want to slice it, the relative performance is strong mm -hmm. and the bulls are in charge. So I would not uh, want it to start to fill the gap, right? Because then you might have a outsized performance day of maybe it moving, what percentage would that be? You know, it could it could easily move eight percent, ten percent in in a day as it launches into that gap, right? So right. I don't think there's any reason to to add to this. It's not giving you. So it, here's an example from pair trading. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're wanting to get pair going and you know get some production on it, the the metric that you use to determine whether you should add or subtract a layer is really the volatility. It's really the noise element. And if you're able to get some production on, you know, layer one and two, then okay, adding a third layer at some point could be merited. If you're not able to get any production at all, then there's no reason to add. And so if there's no retracements on this particular symbol, there's no reason to add. Um, it, mm -hmm you know it could it could stop at that number that you pointed out and yet it might continue to keep going so on a relative performance basis it doesn't warrant a short on a potential risk versus reward it probably doesn't warrant a short and how much is it potentially going to come back even if it doesn't you know launch into the the gap probably not a not a lot i mean it doesn't it hasn't shown any real desire to retrace right does that make sense yeah well so so it, is you that... just you have to you see learning how to let profits run is just as important as learning when to add capital and when not to add capital mm hmm Right. So to add a layer, it's too early. Yeah. I don't think there's an advantage here. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is just call this one where, you know, out of the 20 symbols, it's going to be bad performance for the week. Right. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, as you move more into production, there will be time to take profits. There may be also time to stop out of problems going back and reviewing this is part of connecting the dots and the end of the week, end of the day, whatever review process you have, was there a catalyst? Was there something specific on this? No different than you can look back at Myrna yesterday and say, why did it do that? Well, it's it's pretty, pretty clear. Pfizer, why did it do that? It's pretty clear. Pins, you know, why did it do that? Let's find out. See, that's important. Mm -hmm. 
because then you'll know when to pay attention to news. And even if you don't know how to interpret the news, the price action, the proof is on the tape. At some point, other people smarter than myself are going to figure out what the news means and it's going to start to move, mm -hmm. right? Gotcha. Is that yeah, helpful? That, yeah, that definitely is. Yeah, yeah. Easy Mike uh, agrees <laughs> in the chat there. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think that's uh, that's about it for today. I mean, the the stock odds portfolio is uh, is a bit down. It's been been up and down this week so far, but you know we'll see where. Well, it what it what it was. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, it was minus 0. 0.6 on Monday and uh, and flat yesterday, so it bounced all the way back, mm -hmm. and then it's uh, down minus 0. 0.7 right now, it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's about so it's yeah, minus 0. yeah, so it's yeah. back down again. So it, it's it's going to be a bit floppy. It it seems to be based on what's in there. It seems to be very sensitive to this being a um, down week, meaning that it's not performing that well on a down session. Mm -hmm. So if something gets resolved with this debt ceiling, or we have any, even if we have the glimmer of hope. Uh, you know, and the market was to rally back, then that's probably where this uh, would uh, would benefit. So, yeah, that's where it ended. Hold up. your horses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, hey, look at look at you know things can change dramatically. Like um, it was uh, the week before last, when on Friday all of a sudden there was a pretty big reversal in the portfolio too. So just uh, just keep that in mind. Lots of things can. Uh, Mm -hmm. can change yeah you know and usually yeah. they change when you least expect them to or when you've given up hope altogether right yeah exactly <laughs> so anyway yeah all right well all right well uh, good session with you thank you for going over that stuff yeah thanks i hope this is all uh, useful for those of you tuning in um we'll just check in on the the futures here we're currently uh you know, still down about 0.9% uh, at uh, 4121. Um, and remember to tune in uh, with Joel for the closing print at 3.30 Eastern. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for tuning in.